Good morning to everybody. I'm going to speak about new funding me mechanism, and this is of importance. We have seen now just in the presentation from Stefan Victor what it roughly may cost, and we know we have to go down new ways, as was mentioned during this meeting. It's the first time we have a viral cure. It's the first time we have a cure for a chronic disease, hepatitis C, cirrhosis, and liver cancer, and therefore we are going down a new highway and probably paving the way to other new antivirals uh, coming up in the next years for uh, other uh, implications. So the objectives of a meeting that the Viral Hepatitis Prevention Board organized in early June was actually to increase the political commitment because this is essential in finance uh, sustainability and to identify potential funders. Now we didn't identify potential funders but we certainly found a, a whole bunch of new mechanisms that have not been used. And so our task was also to investigate and how we can convince decision makers that we can make it affordable to cure and, as was said, eventually to eliminate hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Certainly hepatitis C is feasible today. I'm very optimistic that this is true for hepatitis B also. So we had a meeting with uh, cross-sectional representatives, un unusual from pharmaceutical companies and of course academics, but we have a lot of NGOs. We had also policy and communication experts and we had a few finance experts, which is unusual in our medical scientific surroundings. And it was very interesting. So, how are we going down the road to new funding mechanism if needed? Well, certainly there is a need to understand how current funding works, and I'll go through that and walk you through some new ideas later on. To be short, in conclusion, there are several ways that we have to investigate to meet the numbers that have just been mentioned. One is that we should be able to use existing funds according uh, to different ways if we think that the use for hepatitis C is well as a better use than uh, other ones. So I don't know, but this has to be explored. The other side is also to create side funds to existing funds, I'll come back, or to create specific funding body for hepatitis, there is none so far, or then, as I said, finding new mechanisms. And I think it's probably going to be all of them in the end. Now, of course, one way is to lower the price of uh, the agents. I don't want to go too much into details because this is already being practiced. There is volume and tiered practice. There is voluntary licensing and compulsory licensing. And uh, the volume has been practiced in Egypt, just say, you can achieve high volumes with low price, so you need to be able to deliver high volumes. There are disadvantages, time consuming, and multiple contracts. Each new drug, each new uh, composition of drugs needs a new thing. Voluntary licensing, this is the generics, I don't want to go into details. And then, of course, also compulsory licensing, where the TRIPS agreement uh, 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 freedom is, is not being used, but it's been pursued. And to my knowledge, it has not been finalized yet, but there are several agencies and governments who go down that way in order to lower prices of DNA. So this is not a new funding mechanism, but uh, it's certainly also part of the funding. So use existing funds differently as was, for instance, just mentioned in the last uh, uh, talk, there are a lot of costs to current treatments, and some of them are uh, questionable. So is it, from a public health perspective, not better to shift uh, uh, funds uh, and use them in a, in a more uh, efficient way, let's say, to cure hepatitis C? And this has to be 
considered, and this has been considered in the past when the Global Fund and the Gavi Alliance, for instance, created uh, uh, the HIV Fund. And so should we use the Gavi to pay for hepatitis C? Uh, there are some openings for co-infections, but it's not, not certainly not for anything. There are other, other bodies who, who use existing fund differently. I don't want to go into details, but it has a problem that always relocating resources and agreeing on new priorities is a cumbersome process. And of course, we are not here to harm uh, well-functioning other uh, medical procedures. So we can, could create side funds, additional side funds to existing bodies. And here uh, we could uh, think, for instance, we have, there is a big regional fund that was discussed here, which is PAHO's revolving fund for vaccines. Could we add additional resources to a fund that is actually functioning well and, in, and so uh, use appropriately uh, what is already uh, uh, present in, 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 in the sense of managerial, trust, uh, competencies uh, instead of creating everything from scratch. So uh, this of course has the advantage that we could gain time and uh, uh, avoid unnecessary mistakes uh, f uh, by learning from lessons past. So, uh, but again, it is not easy for an existing body to manage uh, additional tasks and additional money, and therefore uh, uh, the resources have not only in funding but also in human resources to be given to these bodies. But this is certainly something to very seriously consider as some bodies are partially interested. Now, should we create a specific body for viral hepatitis only? There is an advantage to that, that, that the funds are only dedicated to hepatitis when they're competing with uh, other priorities in health. And of course, uh, uh, we can also build on, on, on the HIV AIDS experience, at least partially. But th there are disadvantages in setting up a fund. I don't say we should not do it, but we have to know that finding the appropriate managerial structure is uh, not uh, a smooth task and takes time. So finding new mechanisms. Here we go outside of our usual uh, uh, things. So discounting for large page scale is somehow not new, but could be done. Crowdfunding and microfinancing. This is probably not good for a global effort. But some isolated and neglected community may think of that if they don't get the funding from more central ISPAC. Social impact investments. These are usually bonds, and they are also here under social and bonds. This is a little bit a mix-up. They are different financial constructs. And according to the finance uh, specialist, these two uh, possibilities have a real a uh, chance to meet the figures that we've just heard. So we're speaking of hundreds of millions to billions uh, using these uh, thing, uh, uh, finance tools, which we are not used to. We are not finance experts, but let's come back to that later. And of course, last but not least, in the countries where there is no national health insurance, uh, a very serious consideration should be given to establish one. So having just given a very short overview of the meeting's outcome, what, what shall we do about it? Well, uh, we, we need to develop a fundraising concept. This has been uh, repeated again and again. And to do this, we need better data, more health economic studies, and we need the business case. And we, I think most, or I'm sure for myself, I'm not competent to design a business case. I'm not a finance guru with money in my pockets. But what was interesting is that even in public health, return on investment is invisible and is existing, not in the field of hepatitis, but in the field of uh, uh, prison prevention measures in New York City. 
and uh, also in the UK for rare, some rare diseases. So these things exist and we do need to develop these what we de good data, good policies, but also a good business case. And this is probably something we have to learn from the finance people. And some of them, some important banks you would not expect. I mean, JP Morgan was, for instance, uh, collaborating with New York to set this up. So the other di difficulty is that many potential donors are not at all familiar with the field of medicine or healthcare in general and least so with hepatitis C. So we need to interest them, and to do that, we will have to do some efforts. So we've said there are some, a lot of lists. I will not go uh, to uh, the details due to time. But of course, there has to be a general commitment and a political will to go that way. I think I've seen this in the meeting today, but let's be sure we speak in one voice in the very next future so that all outside potential funders meet the same needs, the same demands, the same requests uh, precisely formulated. So of course, the, this business plan is not done yet, and I, I don't think any country has gone so far, and there uh, WHO and uh, Royal Hepatitis Prevention Board are certainly institutions that will g guide you. I also know that the CDC is going down this way. If you don't know, there are already some people working on that, and at your national level you may reach uh, additional uh, assistance to develop all these national plans. So, uh, this is my last s slide, and because we are in a new field, one uh, important thing, and, and we've all also spoken in this meeting, for instance, about Georgia, demonstration projects, how we further move uh, forward our importance, because we are not quite sure what is the right way, and there is not a correct decision today that will uh, guide us in funding and, and preventing and controlling hepatitis. Uh, definitely as of tomorrow, it's really a, a learning by doing uh, expertise and that's one of the fundamental issues and I think uh, this is going to be very challenging but very rewarding in the next few years. Thank you for listening.